just verse 19. When you have it, say, I found the word. If you're still looking, say, I'm still looking. Isaiah 43, 19. <clears throat> Behold, we'll do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Let me read that again. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I want to talk to you today from this thought when favor shows up. Look at somebody say, favor's coming. It's coming. Yeah. Feel the saints getting weary. But tell somebody again, it's coming. It's coming. It... Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us today. Grant us everything that we need to deliver what you've placed in our spirit today. Anoint your servant a fresh touch of the frailty of the body even now. Allow your word to go forth with power, with conviction. Thank you in advance for favor. Thank you in advance for what you are going to do. Thank you because it's already in process. Hallelujah. And we thank you now. In Jesus' name, amen. On your way down to your seats, tell somebody favor is showing up. <laughs> favor is showing up. I've spoken a lot in my years of preaching, especially in pastoring. I've spoken a lot in reference to time and talked about the timings of God. I have come to realize that time is a very important aspect of success. If you don't understand the timing, or if you miss the timing, sometimes things have to go full circle before that opportunity presents itself again. Throughout the scriptures, um, the success of God's people was always based on them understanding the timings of God. And I have come to understand that, that God has a central point from which every arena of our lives operate from. And whether it is individually or whether it is corporately, this central theme is called, or this central point is called time. We like to talk about time, and we even like to waste and, and but, but, but God moves based on timing. Strategic timing is, is often involved in the fulfillment of God's promises and purpose. We say that we're waiting on God to do certain things, but, 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 but unless you understand the timing of God, you will miss what God wants to do. God moves by time. Not so much your time or my time, but God moves according to time. And so strategic timing is often involved in the fulfillment of God's promises. And in Paul's writings, Paul used this terminology. Paul says, when time had fully come. That amazes me, when time had fully come. And I have come to realize that God has a fullness of time. This new thing, 
this new thing that, that God is, is about to do in the lives of his people will require us to understand time. Amen. It will require us to understand that we cannot waste time. Too much time has already been wasted. Let's be honest. We would be much further along individually if we had not wasted time. And most of our time was wasted with people who didn't understand time. That's why they took up your time, because they didn't understand time. And so when you understand something, be, because this new thing that God is about to do in the lives of, of his people will require an understanding of time. And as the believer walks with God, you will find that there are two principles at, at work when God wants to move his people to another level. One is, God will always move his people to a time, God will always move his people to a time of great praying when he desires to do something great. Amen. God will always call you to a time of praying. That's why I said during the consecration, that, that eighth day was not the end of the prayer time. Amen. But sometimes we get that in our minds. Well, Bishop said eight, eight days or, 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 or whatever the case might be. But, 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 but God will always call us to a great time of praying. Number two, whenever you experience a period of a continuous struggle concerning what God has been saying to you, it is a clear sign that God is about to, that, that there is about to be a great move of God. Anybody feel like you're wrestling something right now? And anybody feel like you, you're in a wrestling match right now? God said it, but it's not coming to pass. God said it, but it's not coming to pass. That simply means that when you're in a struggle, and it's a continuous struggle concerning what God has shown you and said to you, there is about to be a great move of God. Oh, bless his name. So this is why when you're going through some hard trials, you you need to understand the power of thank you. Hmm. Listen to me. You need to understand the power of thank you. It takes more to say thank you than it does to complain. Amen. But you got to understand, when you're going through, you need to understand the power of, of thank you. The Bible says, in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So, so we, we think sometimes that, that trials and circumstances happen to us to hinder us. But the reality is that every trial and every circumstance is an indication that God is doing a new thing. Hey, I know you don't see it like that, but every trial that you go through Every difficulty that you have, it's an open door for God to do something new. Oh, y'all missed it. Everything that I go through has a purpose. If I understand my Bible, everything I deal with has a purpose. Amen. Even the times when we didn't listen to God. Even the times when, when we made a decision and didn't listen to a God, God showed us there was a purpose. Amen. So it's something here because when you look at this, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that, that since the beginning of the year, many of us have had some moments where things seem confusing. We're only eight weeks, no, not even eight weeks, six weeks into the new year. And things seem to be confusing. Maybe, maybe it's just me, but, but, but it seems like what you've been going through is not lining up with what God uh, with what God has said to you, Amen. May, maybe it's just me, but it seems like what you're going through is not lining up with what God has been showing you or saying to you in your prayers. It's just one. Is it just one? May, maybe what you're dealing with, and it's really puzzling because God, what you're showing me and what is happening is two different things. Amen. What you've been waking me up in the middle of the night and showing me is different than what I'm dealing with. 
Amen. God has a way of showing us what it shall be. Oh, bless his name. And so, and so when you look at this, it's something because there is some praise that ought to take place while in the wilderness so that when your season changes, somebody say season change. When your season changes, you'll be able to, to say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? I've, I've been watching the news. They've been interviewing people, and they're asked that stupid question. What do you think about the weather? Well, it doesn't take a brain surgeon. Folks said, I can't stand it. I'm tired of it. I want to go to Florida. I want to go to California. I'm sick of it. We got too much snow. I mean, people just go on and on. Come on, any fool, I mean, any person you get, that you put a mic in their face. And what do you think of this? Isn't it something how that, listen, if you just steady yourself, spring will come. <laughs> I don't care how much you try to rush it, spring will still come. Amen. Keep your shovel in the driveway. Keep your salt in the shaker. It doesn't matter. Spring will still come eventually. So we don't have to fuss and talk about how we know it's bad. We know it's snow. Look outside. There's snow on the ground. But it's still the day that the Lord's made. Glory to God. I dare not allow a snowflake to stop me from giving God glory. I dare not allow a snowflake to stop me from giving God praise. I dare not allow ice on the street to stop me from getting to the house of God where I can fellowship with the brothers and sisters of God. Well, new thing. New thing. Now, it's something because when you understand the 43rd chapter of Isaiah, I'm going to get into this very, very quickly. When you understand this 43rd chapter of Isaiah, you will find that the word from the Lord to his people was forget the former things. Hmm. One of the areas that we suffer in is we always want to bring up the past. Uh-oh. And you can't live in the past. Amen. But he says, let the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Amen. Because by dwelling on the past, it will stop you from moving into your future. He says, do not dwell on the past. The people of God were about to receive a new thing. And I submit to you this afternoon, in spite of the shape that our country is in, and in spite of this time of economic downfall, the people of God are about to see, uh, see just how God and how great our God is. Oh, bless his name. Well, Isaiah is something here because in this 43rd chapter, Israel is being released from captivity. And I come to prophetically tell somebody there's about to be a release in your personal affairs. I heard this thing last night. There's about to be a release in your personal uh, affairs. Israel was about to be released from captivity. And captivity means, means they were enslaved, they were confined, and promises that God made them, made to Israel while they were going through. I like that. God didn't wait to promise them uh, when they got out. But God gave them a promise while they were still in it. My God. And God gave them a promise to see if you'll still praise me. While you're going through the most difficult days of your life, will you still give me glory? Will you still honor my name? Will you still call upon me? In the time of trouble, God still spoke promise while they was in it. Tell somebody, say, he's still speaking, he's still speaking. He's still speaking. He said, now there's something, because there were promises that God made to, to, while they were going through. They, they had his presence and they had his support while they were in it. Oh my God. While your money is funny, you still have God's support. Uh-oh. My. How do you know that, Pastor? Well, how many of y'all ate breakfast th this morning? Or so how many of y'all wish you had? All right. 
<laughs> well, isn't it interesting how that, in spite of how the economy is, you still eating. Now, there's some stuff you should be eating, but you're still eating. In spite of the economy, you're still buying stuff. Uh-oh. You may have to wait till it's on sale, but you're still buying. You may have to go in and mess it up and, and kind of hide it in the discount rack in hopes that when you come back on next Saturday, it'll be another 10%. I think I got a witness in there. God is still taking care of you in the midst of a recession. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. If you are eating, eating hot dogs and beans, it's because you want to. And that's your favorite meal. But you're not eating it because you don't have anything. My God, you're still going to, to, to the Red Lobster, eating shrimps and everything else. Lord have mercy. Isn't, isn't that amazing? In the midst of all this, God holds to his promise. While Israel is in captivity, God says, I got you. While you're going through, God said, I got you. While you're dealing with, said, don't worry, I got you. If you stay on course, at the end of all this is victory. It's something, because now he gets to, to the place now, it's something be, because God said he's, he's making a way in the desert. You, you've got to read this 43rd chapter be, because the new thing is not so much to come. God is saying, I'm already doing a new thing. Oh my God. He gets to the point now, and the question was asked, uh, do you not perceive it? And God said, God said, he is making a way in the desert, not only a way, but he said, I'm also giving you water in the desert, a, a place where you haven't gotten water before. Mm. Can I tell somebody today, there's opportunities coming? Oh, I got the wrong church today, I think. Huh? Let me go down the street and preach this. There's some opportunities coming. But you're going to have to have a clear ear to God that you not make a decision based on your finances. Because hurting people make bad decisions. But when you trust God and realize just because it's glittering doesn't mean that it's gold. But God said, I'm going to make a way in the desert. I'm going to give you water where you have not gotten water before. Am I talking to anybody this morning? Oh, praise the name of the Lord. And what I feel, what I hear is this. God promised a road in the wilderness. He was promising them an unobscured route back to the place of promise. Uh, and this is what the prophet Isaiah was saying to the people when he said, road in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. This is the new thing he was talking about. And I declare to you on this afternoon, God knows exactly what he's doing. Tell somebody, say, God knows exactly what he's doing. This stuff is to make you. This stuff is to develop you. Oh, God. This stuff is to process you. Oh, bless his name. There's a promise being given to you while you're in it. And it blows your mind because you're saying, God, I don't see a way out of this. He says, I'm going to make a way. I'm going to create a way. My, am I helping anybody yet? I'm going to create a way. And when I create this way, you'll know that it was not man that did it for you. It was not your husband. It wasn't your wife. It wasn't your good friend. God said, get done with this. You'll give me glory. Give the Lord a praise right there. Hallelujah. Well, it's, it's interesting here now because I declare to you on this afternoon, God knows exactly what he's doing. He has a purpose for why he has allowed the situation to stay as long as it has stayed. I know you wanted to be done with this by now. You want to kick it to the curb by now, but God said, I've allowed it to stay because it's keeping you humble. Uh-oh. 
I know you want to say, God, I'm already humble. He says, no, no, you're not. That's why I got to keep it there just from your response. Oh, bless his name. He has a purpose of why he's allowed him to stay as long as he has. It is because a change is coming. Touch three folk, a change is coming. Now, I need to talk to you spiritual folk who, who understand that a change coming doesn't mean that everything has to change. Because sometimes the change that needs to come has to be with you. If God can just change me, if God can just change my thinking, if God can just change my attitude, if God can change my stinking thinking, then a change has come because it's not always on somebody else. There's some stuff about me. Touch three folks and a change is coming. Tell your neighbor, look at me now. Look at me now. Get a good look. A change is coming. My God, a change is coming. I'm not only going to change my hairdo, but I'm going to change my attitude. I'm not only going to change my clothes, but I'm going to change my attitude because a change is coming and a new thing won't happen until a change. God had to get Israel out of that frame of mind. They had to get him out of a spirit of captivity. Because sometimes you can stay in captivity so long that that's all you know is captivity. But I come to set, I feel like preaching now. I come to set the captive free in here today uh, that God has already released you, my God. And if you praise him in the desert, uh, if you praise him in the wilderness, uh, you'll start seeing water. If you praise him in the desert, uh, you'll start seeing water. If you praise him in the desert, You'll start seeing something. Instead of going home and complaining that there ain't nothing changing up in here, maybe you change first. Then the dog might meet you at the door and, and rub up against you because the dog will be glad to see you now because right now ain't nobody glad to see you when you get home until your attitude changes. <laughs> it amazes me here. I, I got to rush through this because the favor that's about to be poured out on the people of God will be beyond the ordinary. <laughs> because favor has been defined, I told you this a year years ago, favor has been, has been defined as special kindness. Special kindness. Out of the ordinary. Exceptional kindness. That's what favor is. And the Bible says in, in the third chapter of 2 Kings, Ahab died. And the king of Moab rebelled against the people of Israel. And the people needed the favor of God. They needed God to do a new thing. How many of you need God to do a... Really, really how many really need God to do a, a new thing? How many really need God to do a new? Well, Ahab dies. Moab be, rebels. People needed favor from God. They needed some exceptional kindness. They needed God to do a new thing. And the Bible says that, that the three kings joined together. That's why we got to be careful that the enemy doesn't separate us. Because God may call you to join up in prayer with the one you don't care for. You ain't saying much now. Some of y'all so say to me, I'm, 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 you a fool. If the enemy can keep us separated <laughs> and always contrary, these three kings, the one thing they had in common, listen, they didn't, they didn't all drive the same kind of car or chariot, didn't live all in the same neighborhood, but the one thing they had in common, they had one common foe. We've got to whoop this common foe, is what they were saying. The three kings joined forces in order to defeat a common enemy. They marched in the desert for seven days and they ran out of water. 
not only for themselves, but even the animals were suffering. And the Bible says, Jehoshaphat asked the question, is there no prophet of the Lord here? who we can go to and the Lord speak through him. Somebody spoke up and said, Elisha is here and the word of the Lord is in his mouth. They went to Elisha and Elisha told them, bring me a musician. That's why there has to be, there has to be unity across the board. Y'all ain't going to help me today. Unity across the board. There, there has to be unity, not only, not only with the officers of the church, not only with the sound room, but there has to be unity amongst the musicians. Because the prophet called for a musician because music played an important role in a move of God. <laughs> Y'all get this when you get home. He said, bring me a musician. And as the musician began playing, the hand of the Lord came upon Elisha. And Elisha said, makes valley full of ditches. Now, you got to get this. I, just give me, give me about a three minutes on this. You got to understand this because you're asking, God is asking them, the prophet is saying, dig in the desert. He didn't even say water's coming. He said, dig in the desert. The most difficult place. He said, make this valley full of ditches. For what? Because the prophet knew water was coming. <laughs> So when I get up and, and exhort you to praise God, I'm not getting up I be, because I'm tired. No, I'm getting up for you to exhort God because in the midst of worship, God can heal in this place. Y'all ain't saying much now. In the midst of praise, God can deliver in the house. So it's not a matter of these ministers getting up and saying, praise the Lord. Say, no, it's not that. It's to get your mind to the place. Even though you've been in the desert all week long, if you dig some ditches in worship, You'll look up and God will send water. The prophet Elijah said, dig ditches for this is what the Lord is saying. And I know, listen, I know some of y'all are tired. You're weary. And this snow has not helped. Oh, bless his name. It's added to already frustration of the little money you have. I know it. You have to say nothing. So this, this snow has not helped. You ain't been outside making no snowman yet. <laughs> you bust a cap in snowman right now. Isn't that amazing? It's frustrating. It's frustrating. Especially if you had to take off work and didn't get paid. <laughs> it's frustrating. See, you the person today going to find down, face down in the snow trying to get to the bus stop. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? Frustration, weary. Saints, hear me. Weary. And you don't feel like digging. Oh, come on. Come on now. Come on. Weary. I don't feel like digging, Pastor. I've been waiting on God for a long time, Pastor. You're talking about digging. I don't feel like digging. Anybody, anybody there? I don't, I don't feel, come on. Just, just, I, I don't feel like digging. Especially making it full of ditches and, and nothing's happening. But the word from the man of God was dig ditches. For this is what the Lord is saying. You will not see, listen, you will not see wind or rain. However, this valley will be full. Y'all going to miss this today. You will not see wind or rain. So nobody can say the rain did it. You'll see no wind and see no rain, so nobody can say they did it for you. And the only reason why you got that job because of me, only reason why you got that apartment, no, nobody's going to be able to say a word about this because God's going to do a new thing. Give God a praise right there. He's about to do a new thing. There are just some times, I want to close this, there, there's some times, there's some times when you feel like God has abandoned you and, and the season, this season feels like you're standing alone. There are times when we wonder, why am I going through this at this time? Let, let me prophetically tell you, your difficulty is building your character. 
is building your, your character. There's some stuff God is dealing with with us. There's some things about our character that he's still, I know, I know we, we don't want to be honest about it, but there's some things still about us that God says, I'm still working out of you. So the next season, <laughs> you won't fall into the traps in the next season. You won't entertain a fool in the next season. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, bless his name. You won't call a fool a friend in the next season. Because if you keep living, there will be another season. <laughs> and if you haven't learned from this season, you will not move from this season yet until you've learned something. And so the prophet, so, so the Bible, listen, there are times when you feel like God has abandoned you and this season feels like you're standing alone. There are times when we wonder, why am I going? Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. God is working on your character. He's working on some things. There is a maturity that will come out of your trial. And what God does next will have a lot to do with you now, with what you do now, what God does next. Well, well, it's something because in this season, you must look at your trouble as a stepping stone. Tell somebody say, when favor shows up. When favor shows up. I don't know who I've had to preach to today, but I need to, somebody needs, needs to know that the new thing, oh, God knows it's been difficult. It seems like just when I get through one thing, here comes something else. Stuff I didn't even expect. God, God, God why, why this? Why now? Why am I going this? I didn't do anything wrong. Why is this happening to me? I didn't do anything. Anybody been there? God, I, I, I didn't do anything wrong. And it seems like I'm being, I'm suffering from what somebody else did. Maybe I'm by myself. <laughs> but God says, you have no idea the level of anointing that's in you. Somebody missed that. Right there. You have no idea the level of anointing. Your anointing is not for these little petty little spirits. <laughs> Your anointing is to deal with those. God didn't call you to deal with them rookie demons. <laughs> you got the anointing in you to high class demons. Y'all ain't going to talk to me now. I got you scared. I'm talking about demons now. Look at it. <laughs> you had no idea the authority God said I put in you. So if you're having difficulty running, well, what is it, the horseman? The footman? How shall you deal with... Tell somebody, say, it's in you. It's in you. There is an anointing that's in you. I'm, I'm going to stop this thing now because I feel the presence of God. There's such an anointing in you now. And you, you've been fighting rookie stuff. They talking about me. Keep living. They lying on me. Please keep living. But I thought they were church folk. Please. You have an anointing to live above that petty stuff. Hear me good, saints. And as long as you allow the petty stuff to pull you down, you'll stay in the low-level living. God said, but I want to do a new thing. Your mama had difficulty with it. Your relatives had difficulty with it. They struggle with it. You don't have to struggle with this. Call it what it is. Oh, bless his name. This trouble that is coming. Paul, Paul said, therefore, we do not lose heart. Even, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. There's nothing but a light level of difficulty. 
You want to know why? Because God said, tell them I'm going to do a, a new thing. Israel's captivity was momentary. It was for many years, but, but in God's eyes, it was momentary. Your struggle is about to come to a close. I don't know who I'm talking to. The struggle that you've been dealing with is about to come to a Now, please don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying you won't have some more struggles. But this one that has you at a standstill is about to come to a close. He said, tell them I will make, I will give them water in the desert. I'll put roads out there for them. And I like this because when God does it, he allows you to see the roads, but some don't see them. And they'll wonder how you got through it. It's because God only showed the road to you. That's why at this time, favor is about to show up. Can I close with, with this? If God has told you there will be peace and things are still in an uproar, it's all right. He ain't finished yet. <laughs> he ain't finished yet. If God told you that you're coming into a wealthy place and you're still experiencing poverty, it's all right. He has not finished yet. Oh, bless his name. If God promised you healing and the doctor sees no change in your condition, it's all right. He ain't finished yet. Glory to God. Well, if God promised you household deliverance and things are getting worse, it's all right. He ain't finished yet. Would you touch somebody and say, he's not finished yet? <laughs> when you understand the favor of God, you can speak like the apostle Paul. He says, for I know in whom I have believed. Close those Bibles up. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I committed unto him against that day. He's not finished yet. But pastor, you, you don't know the struggle. You, you don't really understand. Please don't say I don't understand. Because a struggle is a struggle. You say what you want to say. It may not be your struggle. But a struggle affects folk differently. But the songwriter said, Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide Till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. Can I tell somebody favor's about to show up? <laughs> favor's about to show up. It's going to show up in the wilderness. Good God. It's going to show up in the wilderness. It's going to show up in the wilderness. Favor is what's going to push you through the wilderness. Favor is what's going to guide you through the wilderness. Favor is about to show up. Somebody stand to your feet and begin to give God praise in here on this afternoon. Favor is about to show up. Favor is about to show up. About to change. The psalmist said, by this, I know he favors me. For he has not allowed my enemies to triumph over me. Anybody in a dry place right now? Really, anybody in a dry place right now? Seems like God's not saying a thing. Seems like he's not moving. Truth of the matter is, he's already moved. <laughs> the new thing is not so much the waiting for water in the desert or the way made or the road in the desert. Or the, that's really not the new thing. The new thing is that when my attitude changes, I'll sense the water <laughs> in the desert. 
I'll sense it. When blind Bartimaeus was born lacking one of his senses, he could not see. But the thing he had, because they say when one's sense, if, if that's the right word, is lost, it strengthens others. The one thing blind Bartimaeus had was the brother could hear. <laughs> he could hear. And if we don't need anything else in this day, because we're a people of tangible stuff, if we could just hear it, because the enemy wants to stop you from hearing it. Because he knows if you hear it, you'll believe those things that are not as though they were. Blind Bartimaeus sensed. He said, what's going on? They said, Jesus of Nazareth is coming through. Bartimaeus got himself not in a seeing position, but a hearing position. Jesus, son of David. Jesus, son of David. Jesus, son of David. Got Jesus' attention. He said, what do you want? He said, I, I want to receive my sight. Jesus gave him his sight based on his hearing. Faith comes by. Hearing by the word of God. I've come to tell somebody today. Favor is about to show up. It's about to show up. If you've ever sensed it be, before, sense it now. Favor. He's fed you in the desert. He's fed you in a dry place. <laughs> He'll cover you. It's one thing to give God praise because you got everything, you got a cupboard full of stuff. It's another thing to give God praise and ain't nothing in the cupboard. <laughs> oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. Somebody sent this to me some years ago and I, I don't know whether I even have it all straight, but Man was abandoned on an island for a long time and he prepared himself to be there for a while and he tried all kind of ways to signal for help. Seemed like there was no help in sight. It was a real hot day, this particular day, and the man walked off from the island. He had built himself a hut and the man walked off walked off trying to find food somewhere on the other side of the island. And when he came back, his hut was on fire. The heat from the sun burned up his hut. Don, he was so frustrated, he said, God, what else can happen? Why don't you just kill me, God? Next thing he knows, he looks and he sees this boat coming. And when they finally came where he was, he said, how did you find me? They said, we saw your smoke signal. We saw your smoke signal. What you thought was bad, God used it. I'm telling you, he's about to give you water. God have mercy. He's about to give you water in a dry place. He's seen your smoke signal. You thought it was over. Where am I going to sleep tonight? I spent all this time building this hut. And God used the natural things. It burned the hut down. But a ship saw the burning of the hut from a distance. And came and rescued him. Touching him not to be rescued. <laughs> Hold that hand that you're next to you. Hold that hand. Hold that hand if you don't mind. They said, we saw your smoke signal. We saw your smoke signal. I 
I'm wondering in, 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 in here right now. That one that does not know the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. God is, he sees your smoke signal. That you really want a Savior. That you really want a Savior. He's seen your smoke. You've been coming and coming and maybe even grew up in the church. But he's seen your smoke signal. He's come to rescue you. He's come to rescue you. If that's you and you need to be rescued, you need Jesus Christ as your Savior. I want If you're in a backslidden state, I want you to come. Favor's about to show up. Favor's about to show up. Don't worry about anybody else. Don't worry about what anybody thinks. This is between you and God. It's between your relationship with God. You know where you are and where you are not with God. No sense in playing with it. No, no sense in I'm not as bad as somebody. It's not about you being as bad as somebody else. The Bible says, for God commended his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I'm not going to say if you're here, you're here and you need Christ. Life has been one bump after another, especially since you walked away from Christ. God removed some things and even some people out of your life. Serve him so you would trust him. They're no longer your crutch. No longer anybody you can lean on. God said, I need you to lean on me. I'll see you through this. While you're thinking about it, in here now are folk that need a new thing. <laughs> that are ready to drink some water from the desert. Woo, my God. Drink some water from the desert. When I lived in Harrisburg, I, my, my territory as a probation officer was on the other, it was called over the, over the mountain. And I was told that there's a spring coming back to Harrisburg. There's a spring. And so I, stole, I, I took all these empty milk, milk containers. And sure enough, I slowed down. There it was. I, I stopped on, in the middle of the mountain. People had to go around. I out, went and got me all this, all this water straight off the rock. You ain't had no cold water till you got it straight off the rock. This water that God is about to give you you're going to drink from the desert. That in itself is a blessing. I'm drinking from the desert. Oh my. Are there others that will accept the fact that I'm drinking from the desert? I'm drinking. I'm drinking. I'm drinking. I'm drinking. The struggle is over for you. The struggle is over. The struggle is over for you. The struggle is over. Come on, I need some folk that don't mind drinking from the desert today. You're not waiting for it to come from a from a golden hose. A silver water spout. A crystal vase. I'm willing to drink from the desert, Pastor. If it means his presence, I'm willing to drink from the desert. And I'm willing to walk the highways in the wilderness. Because I'll always have his presence. I won't wait to get out. I'm going to bless him while I'm in. Blessing him while in does a whole lot more than waiting till I get out. If that's you, come on. Struggle. The struggle is over for you. The struggle is over. The struggle is over for you. The struggle is over. 
The struggle is over for you. The struggle is over. The struggle is over. For the struggle. You. 